Buckingham Palace has revealed its plans for the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. Members of the royal family, dignitaries from foreign nations and guests from across the Commonwealth will be among the 2,000 people attending the service. It'll be the first state funeral to be held in the United Kingdom since Winston Churchill's back in 1965. State funerals are typically reserved for the monarch. Let's go live to Chief Reporter Chris Reason at Westminster Abbey. Hello to you, Chris. The Queen's death set in motion plans that have been years in the making. Yeah, good afternoon to you, Sally. Look, this operation, codenamed uh, Operation London Bridge, was leaked to the media years ago. We knew most of the details, but yes, yesterday, the palace officials have finally come out and confirmed what we did know. But there are some additions we've learned that have been personally overseen by Her Majesty herself, particularly when it came to the order of service, the music and the prayers. But what we do know is that once the lining up, the lying in state process has finished at 6.30 on Monday morning, local time. The doors of Westminster Hall will close. Four hours later, open again. Her coffin will be carried out, placed onto a gun carriage. 142 naval servicemen will drag that carriage from here behind me all the way over to Westminster Abbey. Not that far, just a couple of hundred metres. Uh, that process uh, arriving there at about 11 o'clock precisely, and then the funeral will begin. From there, it will take just one hour, a short service, end with the, the, the last post being uh, played and then the coffin will be carried out again placed on that gun carriage again dragged by those naval officers down the road back along the route that uh, on Wednesday that carriage took to get here it's basically going in reverse back out to Buckingham Palace then it will be transferred onto a hearse and driven out to Windsor Castle where Her Majesty will be laid to rest first in a, a public service 800 people mostly of her her old and current staff and then in private just with the royal family at 7.30 she will be laid to rest of course joining her father, her mother, her sister and her husband Prince Philip. We should add too some breaking news overnight uh, Sally. We've learned that the royal family King, uh, King Charles and his siblings Anne, Edward and Andrew will hold another prince's vigil inside Westminster Hall uh, next to their mother's coffin just like they did in Scotland. It was 20 minutes there, 10 minutes on uh, tonight. And then we are hearing also that the grandchildren, Harry, William and the rest, will do something similar on Saturday night. This has been an extraordinary operation in the making. Let's take a listen to one of the planners who uh, was involved in pulling this operation together. The state funeral is the largest, most formal, the highest ranking funeral you can get. So absolutely everything will be out for Her Majesty and everybody will be in absolutely their best. And Chris, who's expected to attend? Now, this will be one of the largest and best attended funerals of all time, Sally. An extraordinary collection of the world's leaders. Presidents, prime ministers, royalty as well. Uh, all the way through to 200 hand-picked uh, uh, guests from the Queen's Birthday Honours List. We do it in Australia, don't we, each year? Picking out some of those people from the community who have done something extra, something special. Well, 200 from lists past and present will be chosen to go into Westminster Abbey to, to take part in that, including some of the nurses who were involved in fighting the pandemic. The world World leaders include uh, Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron of France, the Emperor of Tokyo, Canada's Trudeau and New Zealand's Ardern and of course our own uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is currently en route uh, with his plane full of some Pacific Island leaders and also uh, his hand-picked collection of Australians who will take part in that as well. We've got Australian of the Year Dylan Alcott, we've got champion trainer Gay Waterhouse, her husband Robbie. Um, it's going to be something extraordinary inside that funeral, Sally. No doubt about that. It's going to be a very moving day on Monday. Certainly will. All right, thank you very much. Chris Reason reporting there. Let's go live now to Amelia Brace, who's with mourners queuing to pay their respects at Westminster Hall. Amelia, the line's now stretching nearly seven kilometres. Yes, Sally, but it is growing by the minute, the second almost. Take a look behind me. About an hour ago, we were a few blocks that way uh, near the Tower Bridge on the Thames, and it has just spilled into this suburban street. It's now stretching along the edge of this street 
all the way around the corner and you can see the people coming towards us. They are racing. We've seen people running to join the end of the queue, knowing that once they do join the end of the queue, they are looking at about 12 hours waiting in line before they finally get to Westminster Hall. Now, you mentioned that estimated uh, length. That's actually a, a bit deceptive because that is as the crow flies. But the government has set up uh, barriers in many of the parks along the river, which actually cause the crowd to snake back and forth. And that adds a significant number of kilometres to the total journey. To make matters worse, it has been quite a cold night here in London, much colder than we've seen all week. We've actually seen those uh, space blankets or those insulation blankets being handed out to members of the queue. And when you add to that the boredom and the hunger and the physical exertion of standing on your feet and walking for so many hours, it really is quite miserable for some people. In fact, uh, paramedics have had to treat or take away around 250 people overnight. So that obviously is alarming. Despite that, though, many people are in good spirits. They say that the goal of seeing the Queen lying in state isn't the only reason that they're here but for many people just being in this queue is a once <coughs> excuse me a once in a lifetime opportunity i brought some toys with me and i loved looking at the view my parents are in the military so the monarchy has been a big part of our lives thing and the fact that she was on the throne for 70 years showing us how how we can be strong and powerful as well in our own lives, I think it was great, yeah. And as I said, this queue is getting longer as we speak and it's expected to really ramp up in the coming hours as the sun finally comes out here in London to warm things up. And pretty smart people who've spent the night in their own warm bed make their way down here to join the end of the line. It's also expected to really blow out over the weekend when people who've had to well, work all week get their opportunity to come and join the queue to say goodbye to their queen. Sally? Yeah, they're extraordinary scenes we're seeing play out there. Okay, thank you very much, Amelia. The Prince and Princess of Wales have spent time with mourners outside the royal family's Sandringham estate. The royal couple were met with applause and spent time talking to the crowd, accepting flowers and other gifts in memory of the Queen. Prince William spoke of how memories of his mother have come flooding back. Through the wall yesterday was challenging. Sandringham was one of the Queen's favourite places. Over the years, many milestone events have taken place on the estate. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. New details of Her Majesty's state funeral have been revealed with a one-hour service to take place on Monday. Hundreds of military personnel have begun rehearsals in London for what will be a solemn ceremony. Overnight they began rehearsing what will be a sombre but spectacular day, one of the most elaborate events this nation has ever hosted, involving hundreds of servicemen and women with confirmation of what will be one of the most memorable moments of the day. The gun carriage holding Her Majesty's coffin being hand-drawn by naval personnel from Westminster Palace, where the former monarch has been laying in state, to Westminster Abbey, where they will hold a one-hour service, attended by a roll call of world leaders through to 200 key workers and volunteers recognised in the Queen's Birthday Honours List, including some everyday heroes like the nurses who worked on the pandemic. They're going to be executing their final duties on behalf of their Commander-in-Chief, and I think it's a very proud day for all the men and women that are involved. There will be a two-minute silence that will stop the nation. They've revealed also that the gun carriage will then take Her Majesty from the Abbey back along the route it took to get here just a day ago, with King Charles and members of the royal family walking closely behind, including uh, Princes William and Harry. Once it reaches Wellington Arch, just beyond Buckingham Palace, it will be loaded into the state hearse and driven back to Windsor Castle for her burial. It's been revealed that the Queen herself has made some personal touches to her funeral plans, including adding the playing of a lament by her piper. This will be the first time for the best part of 260 years that we've actually had a royal funeral in Westminster Abbey because most of the kings and queens have been buried and had their, their funeral service in 
Windsor. The final burial, though, will be completely private, held inside the King George VI Memorial Chapel at 7.30 p.m. King Charles will scatter earth on his mother's coffin before she is laid to rest beside her husband, Prince Philip, her father, King George VI, and her mother, Queen Elizabeth. Finally, all reunited. In an unexpected reversal of royal protocol, Prince Harry will now be allowed to wear his blues and royals military uniform at a royal vigil tomorrow. Usually only working royals are allowed to wear military uniforms at ceremonial events. Prince Andrew has also been granted special permission to wear his uniform at the vigil after being stripped of his military titles because of his association with Geoffrey Epstein. The special vigil will take place ahead of the Queen's state funeral. King Charles has retreated to his Highgrove estate in Gloucestershire for a day of rest one week since the death of his mother. The new monarch was afforded 24 hours of contemplation ahead of a hectic schedule of events leading up to the Queen's funeral on Monday. Charles will now visit Wales where he'll meet charitable organisations and faith leaders as well as hold a private audience with First Minister Mark Drakeford.